Your APPE rotation year is going to be the most important year of pharmacy school. This is where you take all of that knowledge that you've learned throughout pharmacy school and apply it to actual patients. You're gonna learn how to be a preceptor yourself. You're going to learn so much knowledge, but you're also going to learn what kind of pharmacist you are going to be and how you're gonna practice. So you wanna make the most of it. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my tips on what preceptors actually want and how to make the most of your pharmacy rotations. So let's talk about what you need to do both before rotations start. The number one thing that you need to do is read the description of the rotation. Most rotations have some sort of description. They're gonna give you a lot of the information that you need for day one. So start there and then number two is email your preceptor. You're gonna wanna do this one to two weeks before your rotation starts. So I'd recommend adding a reminder in your calendar so it repeats before each rotation. Before I tell you what to put in the email, I wanna remind you that this is actually your first impression. So you wanna be extremely professional, make sure the email is organized, and proofread carefully. So a few things you want to include in that email is asking about your badge access, where you're going to meet your preceptor on the first day, what to wear, can you wear a white coat, do you not need to wear your white coat, can you wear scrubs. Double check and make sure all the paperwork that you need done for that rotation site is done. This is also a good time to ask if there's anything you need to prepare for the rotation ahead of time, such as any readings that you need to do or anything you need to review or brush up on. Now a lot of times your preceptors are going to tell you that there's not anything to do. And if that is the case, it's on you to review what you think you need to know. So for example, if you're doing critical care, review your notes from class that apply to critical care. Things like your antibiotics, there's a lot of infections there. If you had any lectures over critical care cases, such as managing sepsis and shock, those are great things to review. I also recommend students send an updated CV to the preceptor. That way they can see what rotations you've had, what experiences you've had. And as a preceptor, it really helps me tailor the experience to what you are already know and what you need to learn. This also helps you keep your CV up to date every single month so you're not scrambling at the end of the year or right before residency applications to get everything on there. The other thing to get right before you head on rotation is your mindset. Now yes, this is a graduation requirement and yes, you are paying for this experience. But this is also an opportunity for you to learn from experts in their field. This is your opportunity to ask questions that may not feel appropriate otherwise once you're in practice. And it is also your opportunity to really get good feedback, especially for people who are not doing residency later on. This is your last opportunity to get quality feedback on your work performance. So take advantage of it. One of the best ways to do this is to make sure you set goals on your rotations. Not every rotation is going to be your primary area of interest but there's always something to be learned. For example, if you are on a retail rotation, you could practice your counseling skills even if you wanna work in a hospital later on. Now, what about on rotations? The easiest way to go down a bad path on your rotations is not showing up on time and turning your work in late. Being on time is not hard, but if you are going to a hospital or health system that is very large and you've never been there before, I highly recommend going there the day before or a few days ahead of time to scope out the area so you have an idea of where you're gonna park, where you're going to meet your preceptor. That way you're not scrambling to do that at 7 a.m. in the morning. Now the first day of your rotations is typically more of an orientation day. Yes, you still may go on rounds if that's the type of rotation you're on, and you may get jumped into some of the workflow depending on what the needs are that day. But you need to make sure that orientation piece happens, and as the student you can ask for that. This is where you can ask clarifying questions about your assignments, what's expected on the rotation, and I recommend not leaving that day until you have clear expectations from your preceptor what do they want from you? What do they expect each and every day on rotations? And what are they expecting out of those assignments? This is the best way to set you up for success. I want to take this moment though to remind you that preceptors are volunteers. They're not being paid to do this. And so your preceptors, while some of them are going to be harder than others, they truly have your best interest in mind and they're doing this to help you. Because if they're not faculty, they're not getting paid for the extra time and energy they're putting into you. So when I ask on Instagram what things you guys wanted me to cover in this video, the thing that popped up probably the most is getting asked questions by your preceptors. I want to start out by saying your preceptors don't expect you to know everything. Honestly, the reason they're asking you these questions is to fill in gaps. So they're going to ask questions and sometimes even clarifying questions after that so they can figure out what information you know, what information you don't know, and then they fill in those gaps. 
So what do you tell a preceptor if you truly do not know the answer to their question? So first off, I always recommend giving them information that you know. So say the question is about the coverage of Zosin. And so you can say, I know it's in the penicillin group. I know it has the broadest spectrum coverage. And I know it has really good gram negative coverage, but maybe you don't remember what gram positives it covers. That is how the preceptor is gonna figure that out. So you can tell them all the information you know, and then they can help you with that gap. If you truly don't know where to start it all say thank you for that question that was a great question I'm really not sure so I'm gonna take a moment to look that information up and I'm gonna get back to you any questions your preceptor asks you need to have followed up for them the next day or sooner if they request it sooner and when it comes to asking questions you should be asking questions too now the types of questions I expect from students aren't the ones that are easily found on Google or when you search on Lexicomp but more nuanced practice questions for example if a vank trough comes back in your you're not really sure what to do or you see a preceptor do something and you don't understand why, ask them. In order for you to develop your own set of rules for practicing, you really need to understand what current pharmacists do. And this is where that opportunity comes in. Also, if a preceptor is trying to explain something to you and you don't understand, ask clarifying questions. As a preceptor, I love when students do this because I know that they're engaged in listening to what I'm saying and they're not leaving something on the table just because they're afraid to ask. Now let's talk about assignments and topic discussions. When it comes to assignments, always ask the preceptor not only what they want, but if they have any examples to show you. So if you're going to be doing a presentation on a guideline, see what they think that students should be doing on that rotation to meet the presentation requirements that they expect. If you're doing a journal club, see if there's any sort of template that they would prefer that you use when you're presenting it. And as far as topic discussions go, ask them if you're going to be leading it or if they're going to be leading it and if there's any specific readings they would like you to do. If they don't have any specific readings for you, for topic discussions, this is a great opportunity to pull out your class notes. And if you have the RX prep book or other study materials, use the chapter over those topics in order to study. This may not give you all the information you need for the topic discussion, but it is going to be a great starting point. And it doubles as board studying if you're using your RX prep book. And when it comes to your assignments and topic discussions and readings and all of those things that have a due date, make sure that you're doing those ahead of time. Don't wait until the day of and think you're going to have time in the morning or have time during lunch or during the rotation in order to complete those assignments, just make sure they're done the second you walk in the door in the morning. This is gonna save you a lot of stress and prevent you from turning something in late because you weren't prepared. Now let's talk about everybody's favorite part of the rotation, evaluations. This sometimes is the hardest part for students because it requires you to be really honest with yourself. And it's also probably gonna require you to occasionally hear something that you don't want to. Again, this is about mindset. So if you've always gotten really positive comments or feedback on your evaluations before, that's not really helping you because there's always something you can do better. So if you have a preceptor who seems like they're hard on you or you feel like they're just really putting you down, think about it as this is an opportunity for you to get better. So whatever they tell you on the midpoint, make sure you you implement it before your final evaluation. With these evaluations, the more you work and put into them, the more you're going to get out of them. I know that they're long and sometimes they feel irrelevant, but they can actually be a really useful tool to make you a better pharmacist. And if you're going for a job or residency, make you a better candidate. Last but not least, let's talk about wrapping up the rotation. No matter what happened on the rotation, make sure you thank the preceptor. Regardless if it's a rotation that you would do again, you should thank them for their time. Pharmacy is a small world, so you don't want to leave a bad impression. Now this doesn't mean you can't be honest in giving feedback to the preceptor on how they can improve the rotation, but make sure you do it professionally. I also had a lot of people ask me about gifts you can get your preceptor, and honestly I don't think it's necessary. If you want to get somebody a gift, getting them something small like a treat or a small gift card is fine, but honestly giving them a handwritten thank you note that tells them that you appreciate their time that they took in helping you is good enough, and it means a lot. Preceptors are also great for letters of recommendation. So what's the best way to ask a preceptor to write you a letter of recommendation? Honestly, I think it's best to ask preceptors in person. So if you know early on, like July, August, even if it's an early rotation, that you want them to be one of your letter writers, it's okay to ask at the end of the rotation. Typically, you can do this whenever you're doing your evaluations and wrapping up the end of the rotation. I recommend asking for a positive letter of recommendation for residency or for a job, or you can just ask them, in the future, if I need a reference, 
could I reach out to for a positive reference? If you're asking early in the year or not right before mid-year and you're doing this for residency or if it's early on in the year and you're doing this for a job, either way, reach out before you actually put them on paper. Just remind them and tell them where you're applying to. If you don't know and it's early on in the year if you want this person to be a letter writer for you, you can always wait and ask them via email later on. Again, just remember to be professional, thank them again for their time on rotation, and ask them for a positive letter of recommendation. If you're still watching this, leave a comment down below about which rotation you're most excited about. I would love to hear what opportunities you guys have this year on your APPEs. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!